Welcome to the Town of New Paltz Planning Board's meeting, March 24th, 2014. Um, a note on the agenda, we've uh, removed the review of the application, Wilmer Wright, for, uh, Park Point, from the meeting. Um, the board did receive um, a draft of its final finding statement, um, but received it just recently and hasn't had an opportunity to review it. Uh, we'll discuss more on that um, later. So we won't be discussing any of that today. Excuse me, Mike, no more right discussion? No, that's why I wanted to say it up front. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, on the agenda, um, review and approval of the minutes of the uh, March 10th meeting. A motion for approval of the minutes. I go with Esther and Tim. Any comments, discussions on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up on the agenda is public comment, other than issues addressed in the public hearing. Anybody here wishing to make a public comment? Yes, sir. State your name and address. Thank you. I'm Eric Scott. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I, uh, I've been a resident of 28 Cedar Ridge since 1986 in the town of New uh, I'm here because I believe that the proposed subdivision on Route 208, 105 Route 208, will have an adverse effect on the use and value of my property, which forms the entire westward and downhill slope in the proposed subdivision. Some 12 years ago, when I purchased the property below 105 Route 208, that area was densely wooded. In the subsequent years, and particularly because of some development at the uh, SUNY campus on Hawk Drive, uh, and those lands from there, there's been a marked increase in the water flow into my property. That water flow comes directly down from 208 through the proposed subdivision, directly onto my property. Uh, the result has been the continued die-off of all these dense woods. And my land is now wet almost all the time. The ground is treeless, and it's now littered with oak trees and 80-year-old maples, and it survived until then. Uh, my basement's been flooded. My, uh, the roadway to my adjoining neighbor at 30 Cedar Ridge Road, who's also an interested party in this, has been flooded three times in the last two to three years to make his road impassable. No vehicles can cross it during those periods of time because of water coming down that hillside that goes through my property from 208 into my property and then into his property. Uh, I'm concerned that my septic fields can fail. Worse than that, I have no place to put another septic field because of the wet lands that now surround my property. Uh, in 2009, I arranged for the Ulster County Soil and Water District to come and survey my property to help me with my problem. They recognized that that problem was directly a result of all the water coming down from 208. They made some recommendations for remediation because of the dead trees, because of the soils. What they found was the soils directly west of the proposed subdivision are impermeable, relatively impermeable. That's what I guess. They made recommendations for remediation. In 2011, 2012, I arranged for an excavating uh, system to be put in, just as the Yeltsin County Soil and Water had recommended. When it's been completed, it's now been two and a half years since then, there's been no subsequent improvement. Water is still flooding. This land is wet all the time. It's my belief that the Town of Newport Subdivision Regulation 121.21A1 indicates that any land to be subdivided must be undertaken without adversely affecting the land and adjoining residences. It doesn't seem to me that this subdivision meets those requirements and regulations set up by the Town of Newport. Recent information gathered by both my, the engineer who's helping me with this project and my attorney uh, address the issue that the Ulster County Department of Health, their SDS approval for this property is in direct conflict with the New York State Department of Health regulations. 
and that the prepared stormwater drainage and uh, stormwater and drainage plan is inadequate to address the problems that this subdivision will cause. I, uh, I brought copies of that to provide to the board of their, their letters. Thank you. So I'd like to present that to you if I might. And what I'd also like to do is respectfully request that the April 14th meeting might be considered for another date, a later date. That's the first night of Passover, and I'd like to observe that and like to be present at these meetings. So I understand. Thank you. That. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to make a public comment? Okay. Uh, We'll move along to application reviews. Uh, first one we up is Saheed uh, Sudden. I'm not going to do it right. 216 Route 32 North. Come on up. You can sit at the table. We got chairs. We will, uh, we're looking to a piece of paper. Looking good. Yes. Um, so basically, um, What's the plan here? Looking good. It's going to be a hair salon or no? no. Cosmetics. No. no, no. I'm, Do I'm your a, I'll let you tell Explain it to her and then. <laughs> it's, um, the store right now exists in uh, Cherry Hill Plaza called Looking Good. Mm -hmm. Mostly they sell uh, cosmetic, body creams, lotions. Basically, it's a all natural cosmetic products is uh, is a new trend just like a health food stuff that was yep. 20 years ago and all this food in the foods and <laughs> pesticides and all that now is a new trend in the uh, cosmetic so we sort of saw a great opportunity and new trend that mm -hmm. a lot of people are interested into uh, natural and healthy even even hand wash soap, even uh, paper towel, or, and all these products that would not have chemicals. So that's what okay. it is. And it already exists, and we've been in business for six months. So we're looking to expand. So we look at that property in 2022, so we a quite a bit. Okay. That's the plan. The we, yeah, the reason we are here. Uh, we understood this is a, a residential property because it was a commercial and it, after six months apparently it becomes residential because it's been in the market over how many more years? than 10 years. More than 10 years. It's been vacant more than 10 years and, yeah. and, and uh, uh, so far nobody be able to do anything with it. One of the issues is we went to ZBA asking for Z, uh, Various use values, and the attorney for ZBA requests that is the best thing they can do is to send us to you guys. Change See if there's change. any other variance we need to do before they grant us <coughs> the uh, use variance. So that's why we're here. I mean, I still don't know which the chicken came first or the eggs came first. Is Gen like generally. Generally speaking, the application goes to the planning board, in, 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 at least in this town, yes. applications go before the planning board that review it, determine mm -hmm. what variances are required, right. and then send you off to the ZBA yeah, for, right. the, for the variances. Yeah. Um, if it goes directly to the ZBA and there are a number of different ones, they don't yeah, know no, them, that's what, they that's, send it back that's to what us. Here, yeah. yeah, that's okay. Yeah. No, that's all right. Dave, um, you want to go over um, okay. the comments you did receive Dave's comments our engineer that's those I mean, this, yep that's it 
as right now, I, this is the first time I saw it. Okay, so. no, no, it's, yeah. it's, that's okay. It's, we're not asking you to answer them. We're just, yeah. <laughs> he went, yeah, you explain it. If you don't. No, 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 I'd be happy to listen to it. That's what we're here for. And, um, listen, if you got questions, I'm going to go along and then we'll get, get the board, uh, any comments the board members have. Dave. Okay. We saw that it was a non-conforming use, and I'm glad, Saeed, that you explained that you've been to the ZBA first. I'm right. trying to figure out the best way to resolve this. Uh, it's it's non-conforming in every way possible. <laughs> it's non-conforming building, it's non-conforming lot, it's a non-conforming use. Um, and what you said about the ZBA helped and the history helped. There was a dentist office there at one time, is that right? And that's yes. been some time ago. Yes. That converted back to a residence? No, never. No. It's been It's been vacant empty. since vacant. for selling, but wow. not. Since he left, uh, he retired from the dentistry and he put the building on a market. At least I think it's my understanding about six, seven years now. More than eight. Eight years is it in the market for sale. And that apparently a few people already tried and they found out the headache and the, what they have to go through, they sort of backed off. On it, that, you know, there's a lot of tremendous amount of hurdle you have to go through to be able to get either, because it's not worth really residential to get a tear it down to make it, and you're still on the Route 32 with uh, lots of noise, and the right. land is a little bit on the, sort of down on the hill. There's not much you really, you can do it in terms of financially be worth putting any money into it as a residential. Uh, the possibility for the, uh, Thing that I see as term of business because it's Route 32. Yeah. Do you know if the dentist was residence was there and this was no kind no of his he office? always had his always. office never he never lived there no. So this, that kind of tells me that this mm -hmm. was there before the zoning was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's wow, this is a what, what, what's the zoning yeah. there? What's the zoning is residential? It's R1 it's residential. R1. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a uh, non conforming, a legal non conforming. Yeah. At that time, or was it no. business? But no, it's no longer. It's prior to the zoning being Yeah, it's been vacant, so it's supposed to revert back to residential. It was a gas station, oh, wow. which then the people who owned the hotel, which is now apartments behind it, um, acquired it and got a variance to put a restaurant in it. It then went, if you look through the records, to some kind of construction office. It then went to a beauty parlor. Hmm. Then there were some other mishmash applications that never came to fruition. And then Mr. Friedman bought it and made it his dental office. He got a variance to make it his dental office. He lived somewhere else. Hmm. Then he retired. It's been vacant and unused ever since. So he got a variance. Do you know if it was a use for it? Yeah, I had I give that to my attorney to uh, give it to the attorney of the town, Joe okay. Morali has all the history of the whole property. I thought uh, he would probably inform you guys, but we that they thought they're going to go to ZBA, so we address it to ZBA, and Joe, Joe Morali has all the. You know, I'm, look, the I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the, the county uh, website and it says it's a 484. So I looked that up and it says 484, one small structure, um, usually a modern uh, building acceptable for several uses, retail clothing store, small office, warehouse, pet shop, etc. So it's pretty broad. Yeah, but that's so not, it's it's not really zone. true. That doesn't go with the zoning. That's, I mean, there's I mean, yeah. different things here. There's the mm -hmm. zoning, and then there's also what the uh, the property class. The, the history that, that we found out. The zoning out. supersedes the property class? Yeah, and but since it's been vacant, that was kind of the problem. It's never it's been got used six as a months to keep its. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't well, matter that it was commercial. So it's got a variance. Mm -hmm. Do you know if it was a use variance <laughs> to allow the uh, dental office? No, it's all. The records back then were sort of like handwritten little oh, well. notes.
Because if if it was granted a use variance, that use then goes with the property, is allowed to continue. The discontinuance of a non-conforming use is not the mechanism that applies to it. What still will apply is that it's a change from a non-conforming use that was allowed by variance, which makes it a conforming use, to a non-conforming use, and that would be within the province of the ZBA. So it's a different problem. It's not much better, but it helps a little bit. So the zoning board has to determine whether it's going to allow that change of use to take place. And I believe what they're probably interested in is determining whether there are issues relating to a site plan of any sort, including uh, dimensional nonconformances that they should be considering as part of that overall action. Dimensional, what is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Setbacks and such like that, so they can mm -hmm. consider it all at once. Mm -hmm. okay, right. Okay. Right. If it, you know, doesn't have a proper front yard, side yard, um, mm -hmm. put it all in one category. I think what we have to look at is uh, how non-conforming it is now. Is the application going to make it more non-conforming or less non-conforming? Um, and so I think why don't we take it from that approach of, I don't think he's planning on doing anything to the structure. And the structure getting, itself right now uh, is not the issue. That we're gonna keep it the same size, the same thing. We're just going to clean it up inside. Mm -hmm. That anything we're going to do, they already had one application. There is a porch, which is part of the garage. We, we're planning to close that. Mm -hmm. If you look at in a, a yeah. site plan, very small, a uh, very small porch area. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it a part of the building because otherwise it's very awkward. Mm -hmm. Not that we need to, but it makes it in terms of just yep. cosmetic one looks better. But the inside of it, that's what you're going to do the inside. The outside, you're going to have mm -hmm. some plan that I don't know if you guys have or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we got. Yeah. So that would then become heated space? Oh, it's already heated. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm, like, oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Right, that corner. That, that corner, that's yeah. Right. That's going yeah. to become heated space. Yes. So you're going to increase the building's code. This is, uh, I'm going to pass this. This is sort of some kind of sketch drawing that how's it going to look from outside. What about, what about parking? If, uh, yeah. yeah, we have the parking as far as the, the engineer that I have. He says there's enough parking according to the uh, presentation of the property and the size of the property. Is seven parking lot plus we got two more in front of it, which we're not going to use anyway. But if we need to, we, you know, we can use that. So is enough parking lot? More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Is enough mm -hmm. set back from the property. According to him, what he, what he you know, he indicated, mm -hmm. it would, you know, basically satisfy all the rules and regulation of the. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need any barriers. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I see something. Mm -hmm. A lot of substandard in area, so I think the setbacks also are yeah. an issue. So how do we decide what, like, what would, it seems like it makes it more non-conforming because it's a residential area and it's becoming a business. I don't want to say that. I want to just say this looks great. But, like, how do we decide what is more well, non-conforming? Well, I think the way I look at it is uh, the site's been used as commercial yeah. all, all along. So it's basically the same. We're not changing any, any yeah. anything mm -hmm. from that. We should review all the nonconformance that the lot has mm -hmm. now, see what we're changing anything to from a nonconforming point of view. And to the extent that it's coming closer to, to conformance, you can send a recommendation. But mm -hmm. you want the ZBA to grant a variance on 
all the little issues that are associated with it, so it's documented once and for all mm -hmm. um, what it is. So. So you think we can? Lyle, any comments? I, I think it's a, a very small lot, and I can't imagine anybody wanting to live there. I think that if we can get it into a small commercial space, and they can get the DOT permission for a new curb cut, looks like that's what they're going for here. Um, and if there's no buried oil tank or anything, <laughs> you know, I, I think it would be great to get it occupied. I, I, I lived on Hummel Road for <laughs> 20 years, and it's been empty all that time, basically. Yeah, I know. You drive by it on a daily basis. That's why I wanted to ask you first. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, you know, and, and just in terms of the neighborhood, there's a house across Hummel Road, a residential place. But then across 32 is the um, hydroponic you know, there's some business yeah. type. Yes. It's all commercial on that yeah. side of the road. And so, uh, the two zones well, also right there. In our, yeah, so um, it's not totally out of character plan, or anything, that's, that's what I'm saying. Our plan is to have businesses going up that corridor. Mm -hmm. So it fits in with that. Yeah, it feels like that's become mm -hmm. a commercial zone, so this would complement the existing businesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like the way Mike put it the best. It's like, whatever we'd be considering, it seems like this would only help it be less non-conforming mm -hmm. than what it is currently. So what are, um, Peter, anything? Well, no, I, I think it has, it's never been a residence, probably will, will never be a residence, we might as well use it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may make the R1. Yeah, good. Tom? I agree with Al. So what I think, well, yeah, what I think we've got to do is See all the non-conformance that it is um, that exists now. Mm -hmm. What it would change with mm -hmm. this site plan, and see if we're moving in the direction of being mm -hmm. less non-conforming, or mm -hmm. moving in the direction of not becoming more non-conforming. <laughs> I think that's the terminology I want to. We're not use. becoming more non-conforming. Okay, let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a ZBA matter in the end. Right. Yeah. Well, we can, so we can, we can we then can send a recommendation to the ZBA uh, based on that. Um, is there anything you need on the notes? I saw that besides the <coughs> update of the uh, environmental assessment form. There's a lot of just details that has to go on the plan, on the final plan. Yes, yeah, so I will give it to the engineer, and he would, I'm sure he will address it. But do you see anything else that besides what is showing here is not complex or we need a variance on the Are you going to put a sign up? Pardon me? I presume you're going to put some kind of sign up? Yes. So we have to check with the need a design so that we yeah, can check with the sign ordinance. There used to be a, well, even before the dentist, there was a pole there, there used to be a sign for it. It was existing, they removed it. But there is a pole already there for the uh, usage of the sign. Well, but again, we worked with the, this new code, though. Yeah. You may check with that. That, that was up there a long time ago, and you have to check with the new code regarding yes. signs. Yeah. Um, for that. So you need the signages and the list of the there, your engineer shows that there's uh, setback issues. There's a front yard setback issue. Mm -hmm. Needs to be 50 feet, then you have 11 feet in this one area. Both 32 and Hummel Road are considered <coughs> front yard mm -hmm. on this, so there is, that would be an area variance that the ZBA would take care of also. Okay, the, the parking space you're talking about? Uh, no, this no, is how far back the setback. Right, setback. Setback for the parking lot and a and setback from the Palmer Road. Notes those on the plan here, too. <coughs> Excuse me? The engineer has a table here that shows what those distances are, okay. that they're substandard, but that can be cleaned up by okay. the ZBA yeah. okay. with an area variance. Are all of those parking spaces existing? You're not. Uh, there's so not parking existing, but it's all flat. It's, it's half of it or three quarters of it. You're not changing the paved areas. Removing no. pavement, actually. Okay, so you're decreasing. So it's, 
-hmm. So it's not, it's it may not require a variance. So at some point it was, presumably. Yeah. You, you need to work with the building inspector, I think, and understand what was approved on the site. Okay. Pursuant to a variance. Because mm -hmm. if you were granted a, not you, but if your predecessor was granted a variance to allow the parking spaces to be where they are and to change the use, that would be your starting point. That this is not a new development that's taking place here. This is something which has existed and presumably has prior approvals. Yes. If they're by variance, then the variance continues forward. Mm -hmm. So. That's the ZBA, right? That's the, that's well, it's the building inspector in the first case, okay. then the ZBA, mm -hmm. if you need a variance. Right. You may not need a variance because it's already been granted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So. So we, yeah, we're seeing mm -hmm. what has been granted before, if it's still valid going right forward, yeah. and then what do you need new from a variance point of view for the site plan to be approved and document that. So when you go to the ZBA, mm -hmm. you have a list of everything that you need to get done from them for right. use of the site. Now what I want to know is, because that's what they want to know, what do you guys want to be considered on on to get a variance on? I think, well, we have to see. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I have yeah. to get a list of yeah, I know. what's in existence what now, I mean. I where you're list. going. Yeah. Um, obviously, from our point of view, if you're moving towards being less non-conforming, yeah. um, <laughs> it is a good thing. Um, and uh, we would be, uh, and again, citing some of the board members, it's a good use of that mm -hmm. undersized lot. And it is commercial on the other side mm -hmm. of the of the road, so it's not uh, uh, out nowhere in mm -hmm. establishing commercial. So I think the board looks at it favorably. But before the board can act on it, mm -hmm. um, it has to we'll go to ZBA. Uh, well, well, I'll have to see what the what it is, mm -hmm. what the variances re would be required, okay. Make, and then um, we'll get together with the building inspector to see what you already may have on this site and and uh we'll see where we go from there and then we could um i, I do ahead. have some questions though because i'm just looking at this aerial photo of it so would the parking be to the north of where the building is currently or to yeah, the that's north? Where it shows. to the north so when you talk about eliminating parking where, where the, any or uh, the, the eliminating is already existing here uh, it depends on that. Again, Stacy, she, she would be going to just include here. So, so there's two existing parking lots. Those are the ones that you're eliminating. I don't know if this to be eliminated or not. We might need it, we might need it, or not. But most of the parking lots for the customer will be here. Right, that's what I'm saying yeah. from this picture. These two, we might leave it for ourselves to have more, even more room because they already exist. Right. usually had one patient okay. at a time, so it was two parking lots. And he, they never, even it was a plane, it was used like a parking lot. This fence is an ex How, When did they put that fence up? They used to use that before that. They used to have a little bit of cobble sack that people drove under that paved area. Under the carport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't because they, they, yeah, I know. Because it used to be, when I remember when I came open to my market, this this fence didn't exist. That's about, about 12, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. And later on, he put the post that nobody even drives in it. That used to be the parking area. Because he only had mostly one patient at a time, and they would ask him to park right in the front of the where he parked. Yeah. But then and he closed it that he didn't want anybody goes in the, the back of the back of the thing. Well, that's, that's, again, and the goal was that it was here, the people went through here to go to park. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's see what you need. Okay. Um, that said, Kelly, will even know when Stacy gets back, if, if we can make an arrangement. There is no like, site plan. It just has like, a little typed up use variance, but then there was no, it's just like, use it as, as a dentist office, but there's no site plan, so there's nothing in the file that shows. Well, let's. Have it pull and get her, yeah. 
make some determination on it because obviously we want to document if, it, if we're sending it to the ZBA and asking them to grant the variances, we want to get all, all that they need and document it, what it is, so we have something. Uh, uh, so I'm going to let you um, go up to see uh, the building inspector. Yes. And um, between uh, Dave and the building inspector, we'll come up with what variances mm -hmm. you need okay. for the site, see if any of them exist. Mm -hmm. um, and so we can then send it off to the ZBA uh, to grant the variance. We would come, if they granted all the variances, mm -hmm. you would come back to the planning board where we would be able to give you site plan approval. Okay. Okay, and then we'll have a documented site plan mm -hmm. and we'll have all the notes and languages of, of the variances right on that site plan site so plan. it will be a viable piece of property once you get through all this yes, right. <laughs> okay first we got to make it live now yes we'll get it right, right. Yeah. okay okay thank you very much for your um advice. hold on a second we gotta so we're gonna go back to the stacy and uh yeah and the zbf uh, well you. You're going to Billy Inspector first. Right. Then you'll be back here. Okay. And then we'll send you to the ZBA okay. formally uh, on that. Sign it, Tom. So I know who to blame. <laughs> What we do is just keep a record of what we've talked to. We give you a copy of it. Um, so you, you have. But I think our step in this is to find out what variances are going to be required for the site um, and to establish we've done it before. Even if you needed one variance, we would do a site plan review. We would do a seek a determination. You need a new form for that. You gave me the old form. That's in Dave's letter. There's a new short form for the procedure. For, uh, for this application? Yeah, this one is the old one. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you can get a new one. Yeah, okay. One. okay. Um, and then we'll redo it, and if it needs variance, we send it up to uh, sure. ZBA. Mm -hmm. They'll do an evaluation. If they grant the variances, it will come back to us. Mm -hmm. And then we'll like uh, the, the document it, and then we become a site plan approval here. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank Good luck. Much. Let's yeah. get it. Thank you. Thank you. Positive thank you. thing yeah. for the site. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, we're not doing Wilmore right tonight. Okay. <laughs> you might as well go. I, I want to discuss um, a part of. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, George is going to give us a 10 minute. I wasn't going through the whole document. That's all I was saying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and um, but let George give an update and we can have a little discussion on, on that. Here we are. Okay. Kunz, where are you? Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> Are you going to stay awake for our meeting? I have troubles. <laughs> you can sit down here. You brought the engineer. You did take the measurements with me, right? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, we sent you back for um, uh, details on parking, the entrance door, uh, and lighting. Um, did you give me an updated diagram? That is the updated one. Right. If anybody wants to? Oh, you got it all? Okay. And we have a short form uh, assessment. Um, okay. Um, thanks for your help, but we're supposed to do part two. Okay? Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a little lost on the whole thing. <laughs> I understand. Dave, you got a copy you want to? I don't have a copy of that. No, no, it's the assessment oh, no. form. Before we, uh, does anybody have any? Um, any comments on the 
Vale. We've changed the forms mm. after 20 years and now they're <laughs> wandering. More questions. More questions. This new form requires uh, you to go on the DEC website to have certain items checked. I think for an accessory apartment inside the structure, though, we really need to do that. Okay. Uh, the part two, I can go through that part? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Will the proposed action create a material conflict with the adopted land use plan or zoning regulations? The answer to that would be no. Will the proposed action result in a change in use or the intensity of the use of land? It's something that's approved uh, by the zoning code, so that's already been looked at, so the answer would be no. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? The zoning code has standards to make sure that that's compatible with the community and those are being met, so the answer would be no. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? Answer would be no. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonable available energy conservation or renewable energy Op op opportunities. I'm sorry. It has. What's the year out? I'm just curious. Uh, 71. So it has some water saving fixtures in it. Yeah, and part of the Board of Health was to actually change them okay. to all low flow on the letter from the Board of Health. Okay. So I'm not. We didn't buy it yet, so I'm not positive what's currently in the house, but we would be able to change them. Will the proposed action to impact existing public private water supplies? Will a proposed action impact public private wastewater treatment facilities? And I remember that there was going to be a septic tank change yes. on that. Proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? The answer would be no. Will a proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? The answer would be no. Will a proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? There's no land disturbance, so the answer would be no. Will a proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? The answer would be no. That okay. So, can I have a motion for a negative declaration on the Accessory apartment, uh, accessory so apartment. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Tim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 To make sure I know which box I'm checking. I have a motion to grant special use permit for the accessory apartment at eight Gate House Road. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. 
Okay, why? Uh, <laughs> we have uh, uh, approved a special use permit for the accessory apartment at the side, uh, at the house. Okay. Okay. That, so uh, should that be conditional on that septic tank? And septic tank. Well, uh, those those were the requirements of the Department of Health. That you put Department yeah. of Health said a new septic and low flow. Yeah. So to, mm -hmm. for them to, it's conditioned on those things for yeah. you to do. Yeah. To get their permit. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. okay. Have you closed it? No. Part of the uh, contract was to. Okay. When you close, yeah. you just need to make sure you uh, have a copy of the deed for the building inspector. Oh, okay. It's got to be owner occupied. Okay. Okay. I kept you up late, didn't I? <laughs> Not big enough. <laughs> you know, I do have that with my own grandchildren. But it's working on the floor. You're done. You have an okay. approved accessory apartment. Okay. Um, great. And we'll forward this um, that you can come in and get your building permit and everything else on it so you can do whatever you have to do there. Okay, great. Okay? Just have to pay for it now. <laughs> well, you got to close our house, too, yeah. That's what I meant, the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making it, we're done. Okay. Tommy's going to take you out for a special treat. <laughs> Is that okay? Want to go home? Yeah. So do I. This <laughs> she wants to stay for the rest of the day. Got it all? All right, is that it? That's it. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Got a good helper there. Good night. Yep, come on up. Okay, again, I'm uh, Charles Brown, the uh, engineer for the applicant. Um, since the last meeting, we've re we revised the EAF, um, and uh, I analyzed the swale here. Uh, based upon the capacity of the 24-inch uh, pipe that goes underneath, underneath uh, uh, Route 208. So, um, then we got, uh, got a bunch of comments from Dave. Thank you very much. I could... Uh, Go through those, unless you want to go through them first, Dave, or however you want to do let, that. Let Dave go through, and if you have comments on those, or your clarifications, and if board members have any, what just walk us through, Dave. Okay. There were three things here that uh, need to be addressed before we can deal with Seeker on it and then set a public hearing. One of them is this property would, uh, the steep <coughs> protection would apply. Section 140.38 gives standards and the permit procedures and there's quite a bit that needs to be done to the plan uh, to be able to meet those standards. So that's one thing. Uh, steep slopes, according to that slope protection, is anything over 15%. Uh, the activities including tree removal 
is uh, needs a permit to do any of that on the slope. There's a lot of soil, soil stabilization and erosion control techniques that are required just because, again, you're working on these slopes. There's also a provision that uh, provides that the town can ask for a security deposit to guarantee compliance and that the cost of inspection and monitoring the work has to be reimbursed to the town as well as the uh, work has to be supervised by an engineer that uh, the owner employs while the work's being done. There's a public hearing that's involved in a steep slope permit, and that can be the same public hearing as for the subdivision public hearing. The second is the drainage issues. Um, the analysis was done using a full flow pipe, expecting that that pipe is uh, size is not going to change, which you have to deal with what's here now. The design was to alter the ditch to drop the flow velocity from 15 feet per second down to 12 feet per second. Uh, 12 feet per second is not low enough to stop erosion. Uh, we're going to line the pond bottom, but certainly as soon as it left the property, it would have erosive uh, effect on the ditch downhill at that uh, velocity so well I mean again the, the 15 is essentially the way it is now and that's because it's it's a V ditch um, and uh, yeah that is an er erosive velocity um, and you know the velocity as it leaves the property is is going to be more now than when we uh, and we're going to line it with uh, um, per DOT type 2 stone which is you know about 100 pound stone so we're not going to have erosion in our ditch, and the ditch, uh, the section was put on the plans. Um, as far as the velocity leaving the property, it's going to be reduced, um, but I don't see how we can be obligated to drop it down to seven feet per second when it leaves the property. Um, you know, again, I understand the concerns of the downstream property owner, but you know he keeps bringing up that this water is is from the college, which it is, and um, my client has really gone above and beyond. Um, to mitigate as much of this as you can. Um, the original uh, subdivision for these two lots shows that pipe at that time being a 15 inch corrugated metal pipe. Um, apparently when they did the entrance for the college they switched it out to a 24 inch. Um, 24 inch handles substantially more water than a 15. So, you know, the, the college and, and the state uh, you know, whoever has jurisdiction there, they they increase the flow in this property without you know even coming to the town um, or the building department or anything else. Um, you know, I, again, I sympathize uh, with Mr. Schutz, but um, I really think he's kind of barking up the wrong tree here. There's only so much we can do. Um, that, that's actually you know the question that I have because I feel like a lot of uh, you know the, this neighbor on Cedar Ridge as well as yourself. You know, you're you're kind of put in a predicament that was created by the all the impervious surface that the college built. Right. So, is there any recourse that you know, you know, either of these property owners have, considering but you, you know the situation that, that so the college has basically created a situation that's compromised the value of all of this nearby property. Yeah. And, and you know, my client is, is going to be, because he, he has agreed to mitigate um, his development, uh, which again for a job this size is, is not a requirement of DC or the town, um, and, but he's agreed to do that and that, that's a cost involved with that, so this is also a cost that my client is, is supporting. So what I, mean, I guess I'm kind of asking more broadly, not necessarily to, to you guys as the applicant, but to you know, our, our attorney on the planning board and our engineer. like. What kind of, you know, are there remediation techniques that could be asked of the college that would help you know, reduce a lot of this water because of the impervious surface that, that they built and created? You know, because 
you know, the situation that the gentleman from Cedar Ridge has described, I mean, it seems undeniable that it was a result of all this new impervious surface. They have a, a, a large area right across the street that's, you know, adjacent to their driveway. That there's nothing on it. I mean, they, they very certainly could have put in a, a stormwater maintenance base in there. There is space for it. I, I don't know why that wasn't done. I don't know why the state is exempt from their own rules. You just recently bought this property, is that the case? Correct. Correct. Yeah, uh, and I mean, this is stuff to look at for. And, and <laughs> I, just, I have another question for the chairman also. <clears throat> now, this, because I just bought this property, now all the, this water, this problem just happened to be at these three months, or this was content since he bought the house? How come he didn't come to your... You know what? It's irrelevant. I guess I don't, don't even get in there. Okay? But I'm paying Seriously, for it. Really. I'm getting hurt. I know you are. I'm, I'm just a citizen just like everybody here. I pay taxes. I bought the property. I didn't steal it. I own it. And I deserve to get treated like everybody else. This is my land. Is I have right to buy. I have right to own it and to build on it. No, well, as far as far as right, right, being in right by, by the rules, by the codes you ha guys have, mm -hmm. correct? So now this change was done by SUNY New Poles, correct? This is done by State of New York. So now, do you have power over this? SUNY New Poles, State of New York, uh, no. You don't. Mm -hmm. Does he have power over that? Mm -hmm. well, Does he have power the over that? Area, mm -hmm. it, uh, it's our purview. Because so if he doesn't have power over that, he didn't have for 20 years, why this has to happen to me? I understand, I feel sorry for him, but that shouldn't be me. What we're trying to do here is to ensure that the well, site can course. meet the requirements mm -hmm. uh, of building lots, that anything that is coming onto the site uh, is getting off the site without any increase. In fact, we try to, where we can, decrease the, Correct. the rate and flow, and that's the process we're in right now. Correct. And I already spoke, actually, before I even bought this, I came here and I talked to the building inspector, and she gave me a list which required by the slope, and but the property which I asked for specifically, and, and I asked about this, never was an issue before. Nobody ever brought it to her attention there is a problem down or up or on site or east or west. Well, it's the property there, um, the person who owned the property before you never went to the building inspector or went to anybody else to talk about it or when they laid it out, didn't discuss it. And then what is she doing? She doesn't know anything more than you do yeah, it doesn't uh, until it, it happens. Problem. It just wasn't brought up with her. Correct, but the, the, the homeowner should know he lived there for so many years. He should have complained to somebody, like I'm, comp I'm not complaining, but I'm just, we're talking, mm -hmm. to Can solve you? this problem. Anyway, let's move on. All right, let's see what how we can get out of this. Reducing that velocity is pretty simple. It's some check dams in the ditch will certainly help that. Okay. It's really cheap. Now, I, I, um, you know, I didn't go back and analyze the velocity based upon you know, the, the increased roughness coefficient with, with the larger stone. So that'll help also. Um, I mean, I doubt I can get it down to seven. I can certainly get it below 10, which is, you know, that's. Uh, Two to seven is usual for the grass um, whale. And yeah, I mean, seven. About it's boom. almost a point discharge here. I mean, you're just guaranteeing that you're going to continue the erosion as soon as it dumps off the property. Well, again, that, that can't There's be There's a helped. simple way to be able to deal yeah. with that. Let's do it. See what you got. See what you can do. Okay. I'll, I'll reduce the uh, velocity as much as physically possible we can. Um, and do you want me to jump on the next thing? Because you asked about a uh, 25-year storm event for the infiltration trenches. Um, the reason I use that is because that is the design criteria that New York State uses for their culverts underneath the road. Um, and um, I mean, essentially, what's going to happen is a 100-year storm, those, this, the whole road is going to top. So, you know, no matter what we do, it's going to be a pretty major event. Um, 
that's why it's a 25 year story. Often for subdivision design, we ask roadway drainage, for example, to be a 50 year storm. Okay. I don't think there's that much difference. Than, uh, um, yeah, now what, what would you use for the 50? Uh, seven? Seven inches? Six and a half, Six and but and I'm half? not sure. It's SCS. You can pick that up. Okay. Same as what we use in Platico? Because I have that from you already. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll redo that with the 50 year. This, the last note on the drainage is the DEC is uh, trying to move the look at stormwater as more of a regional solution. When you have a, a piece like this that has drainage problems, there's something downstream that's available in land that could be to attenuate this, that's what we need to look at. That's not something that we're asking the applicant to do, but it's something that the Actually, should it flattens out down there. You, you, you could put a, a, you know, we could put some mitigation measures in here. There's property there that flattens out. Um, you know, you should, uh, let's just talk, you should talk to your engineer about that. I'll provide them whatever information I have. You have area there. You could probably solve your problems easier than anybody. I'm going to get on to the, the archaeological review. Uh, the EAF was changed to show that there was an, an archaeologically sensitive area, which the SHPO maps uh, have some pretty big gray swaths there. So yeah. to find out if this was a serious site or not, we were lucky enough to find a SHPO person that answered the phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amazing. And it turns out that there was something found right across the road. So the, the ship was interested in finding out more about this and suggested that uh, either the town or the consultant, the developer's consultant, could uh, supply the information. So they could look in their records and see if there's some history that needs to be Look Dave. further here, or whether it needs shovel test. Okay, Dave, you know who you talked to over there? Uh, Paula, do you remember her name? Linda. What was the guy's name that you knew from years ago? Brian Yates is the guy, and yeah, he Brian. is impossible to get. We found right. And then who was the guy before Brian? Uh, Mackey, Doug Mackey. Doug Mackey, okay. So her name is Linda Mackey. That's how I remember it. I'm sorry. All right. Linda Mackey. Couldn't okay. believe that we talked to her. Okay. All right, we'll follow up on that. The other pieces here are more uh, kind of general comments. There's one here on prairie wedge grass. Yeah, uh, I thought that was pretty strange because uh, it, uh, the occurrence was 1957. It's, it was considered endangered back then. Um, meanwhile, we don't have any grass on our site, but um, I pulled up, you know, I put it in and I pulled it up and it's all over the country. So all the green places, that's where this grass exists. So. Um, Combined with, with this and, and with you know, not having any grass on our property due to the, the forest and, and the slopes, um, I left that check to know that on our site we don't have any endangered species. Um, when I did the search on this site, I went a thousand foot uh, beyond the center of, of the property, uh, and that was the only thing that came up was the prairie wedge grass. So I feel pretty confident in that. But I mean, if you want me to put yes in an explanation, I'll do that go yes and I'd also contact Natural Heritage Program and check their list on that. Okay. If there's anything else. It's much better on the website. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> A waiver request made for trees on the property and I think based on both the steep slopes and uh, the requirements for subdivision, we need to at least get the location of trees within the development area. Okay. 
Okay, uh, um, and, and you want also the, the other, I saw the, the pipe between these catch basins and, and that? I'll have the surveyor get that at the same time. Right, that was missing. Okay. Right, the rest are details that will be picked up as we mm -hmm. devise the plan. Okay, well, I don't have any other questions. Um, I think we can pretty much take care of all these within the next week. Well, depending on the surveyor, of course. I hate speaking for the surveyors. Okay, see what you can do. Is there any other board comments? I think we're still trying to get a completed package uh, to address the issues on the file. Anything? Um, I don't know if I should bring this up, but I, w I was actually on the project that built the athletic center and put in that road, and we didn't put a culvert across 208. It was existing already. Okay, so the state did it at a different time. The, the original subdivision map I had um, that Dick Barger did, remember when that was? 80-something? Most, most of the, where the track and all that stuff is now, mm -hmm. that was all much lower and there were four baseball fields there and they all drain towards 208 and then down and across mm -hmm. the same place. We raised them up and sent the drainage to the pond on the college campus. Okay. So uh, that was actually, I, I think it was <coughs> under the village um, engineer, wouldn't that be village? College campus was, was part of the village. So if anybody wants to look into that, it would be, um, you know, they would probably have the records for it. Well, I wouldn't, but aren't the dorms, you know, didn't they create a fair amount of impervious surface? You're talking about the track. Uh, yeah, I'm things. talking about the track and the gym and the oh, play fields and stuff. The, the, the I'm talking about the dorms that came in 2000. Yeah, the dorms all go to the pond. You know, we put in a new pond and a dam and everything there, and the dorms all drain to that. It's a possibility. Otherwise, they would be going down through the houses to the culverts, so right? They go to the new pond. Okay. Uh, uh, that's, it's 2003. I mean, I think I still remember it pretty well, but uh, uh, I think Renner and Larios was the village engineer at that time, and they may have the. Uh, I, I just have the final impact statement, and it had divided it up into four areas, and it said that that area was re greatly reduced and didn't. Require anything, so, but I don't have the I don't have the calculations. I don't have the engineering that went into the um, environmental impact statement. So, so if someone wanted to look at the, the impacts of the nearby area, the, they I should think look contact at the village or the engineering company. Right, they should look at some of those projects. Reviewed, yeah. I, I could also construction fund project. Yes, it was a it was a construction fund project. Yes, village. Uh, I wouldn't bet they got Well, there was an environmental impact statement. So there may have been comments. They came to the town or the village. Village. Yeah, village. The state, the uh, dorm authority uh, environmental impact statement? Uh, dormitory authority separate from. This was SUNY construction. Oh, SUNY construction. construction. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, I could also check with the DOT when they. Uh, when they changed out that culvert. Um, if it was anybody else, I mean, Dick, Bar Dick Barger's, I worked off his work for years, and it's always been accurate. Otherwise, I would say maybe it was just an error in the survey. But unfortunately, I can't even ask him. He's since passed away. Um, but I, I, will, I will talk this day, because sometime between, I think it was 88 when this was last subdivided, and, uh, and now. I mean, it went from a 15-inch to, to a 24-inch uh, pipe, which is a yes. pretty substantial the increase. Put in in 2003, 2004. The what? Uh, the Hawk, Hawk, Hawk Drive. Hawk, Hawk yeah, Drive. Hawk Drive. And with that, the 208 section, right, where the drive comes out. Right. That was all done at that time frame, so it okay. 
That helps. It could be that uh, that's when it was put in there. And, mm -hmm. and they might have suggested or they might have said they were doing something else there and they didn't do it. So mm -hmm. it would be a look-see. Um, well, about the question that Mr. Stott had about um, subdivisions harming neighboring properties. I mean, I know that's pretty much what we've been discussing all night, but it just seems like, I don't know. I just find it, I mean, how can we mitigate this project down to the effect that sounds the level that it won't have effect, you know? I mean, it seems like every subdivision has a harm to the neighboring properties. It's the nature mm. of building something. But, like, at what point do we, I guess it's not, you know, we can't say this harms the neighborhood or the area too much, mm. but can we really mitigate this to the extent that the neighborhood is still, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Also, same thing about Passover. We could change this in the next meeting. Well, we need, the, <laughs> we, we, we need the information in first before we schedule yeah. a public hearing. Um, yeah. You can't schedule it unless all the documentation is there available to yeah, the public. But to, to yeah. clarify this, but what you're talking about, the subdivision has to mitigate the impacts of that subdivision. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to correct existing problems oh, for, for downstream that. properties. Yeah, totally. And, and we don't want you guys to have to pay yeah. for assuming it pulls ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and we've, we've mitigated <laughs> the impacts of this subdivision. So, um, yeah. yeah, we got a little bit more work to do a uh, day's right about you know, the sediment roads control and all that, uh, protection of the steep slopes. Yeah. Um, we will do that. Uh, but as far as, as the drainage, which is Mr. Stutt's biggest issue, we've mitigated the drainage uh, for this project. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing more I could do. He does have, again, he has probably down below, it is flatter that he could put in some kind of stormwater management facility. Um, and, uh, you know, I know the engineer that, that uh, he's hired and he's, he's qualified, so um, I'm willing to provide any information I got. Okay, so let's work on Dave's scramble. Let's get the package together. Um, and again, for me to schedule a public hearing, the information has to be yep. here. People have to have time to yep. come and see it. So um, as soon as you get it in, uh, is, is as soon as we can schedule a public hearing. On it. Happy birthday, Louis. And this will be, again, we've got to wait another month, same process again. Yeah. We don't work for <laughs> It's a volunteer board. I have enough trouble getting them out on Monday nights. <laughs> When's the next meeting? April 14th. If you can't read anything, you have to talk to Peter. Well, actually, it's uh, actually you wrote it's, pretty uh, well. It's, it's whatever Dave said, only in shorthand. <laughs> only in shorthand. <laughs> you can read. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. No problem. Appreciate. It. Okay, folk. What do we got left? Um, I can report on those two things that are left on the agenda that I didn't do. Um, on the solo zoning, I haven't. I've been out of town, so I haven't gotten through to Central Hudson yet. But I will make a phone call this week and see if we can line somebody up. Um, and all I'm looking for them is, you know, if we're making a sol uh, zoning ordinance, what are the things that we should look for? And, and, and for commercial zone solar in here, just because we got they have to tie in with, with Central Hudson one way or the other. Um, with regard to access management, um, I thought I knew where the information was that I wanted to put in. I couldn't find it, and, and George talking to George, he told me it was under solar zoning. 
I said, oh, no wonder I couldn't find it. So <laughs> I have it now. I will make a modification. I'll send that around to everybody. I, I extracted the sections that seem relevant to yeah. us. So everybody. Basically, I'm just maybe, yeah, let's take, take a look at it. All I'm trying to do is get into the access management, something into this case that addresses the issues of pedestrian and bike, bikeways um, that goes along with that access management. Um, along, along the lines of what the uh, bike pad letter said, it seems like that's yeah. your, it seems I, like that what we we agreed to do, and their letter echo a lot of our right. I and mean, I'm thinking of cases where we can't, you know, access management wants to keep the cars off Main Street. What I would like to do is keep the pedestrians off Main Street or the bikes off Main Street if I can. So where we can make when we're looking at a site plan. We should be looking at that. The one I liked on um, is preliminary site plan review. He has it underlined on B. The adequacy and arrangement of pedestrian traffic or cross circulation, including separation of pedestrians from vehicle traffic, sidewalk linkage. You know, I, mean, I think we need to see more of that. How does a person get from the sidewalk to the store? Um, and and uh, location of existing proposed bicycle access ways. So I'm going to capture something in there, but if you feel something strong in there, just let me know. And uh, But I want to, when we do a site plan review, I want to make sure that we cover these areas. So I want to make, it's, access management says, look at these, when you do a site plan review, look at the access to the neighboring, um, from a vehicle, basically from a vehicle point of view. But I want to, we talked about pedestrian bikeways, um, not only accessing external, but internal, marking it out more clearly where uh, some of this thing should should be. So I'm looking for, for language from that. And it's in here. If you see something more in there you want to use, um, give me a holler. But I'll take some of this underlying stuff and put it into access management. And, uh, Float it up to the town board. Okay. So we'll give you that a week and go from there. Um, so, Lynn's here. Um, I'd like to set up a special meeting uh, to go over the finding statement uh, uh, in detail that we've gotten from George. I, I propose either March 31st or April 7th as possible days. Eileen notified me April 7th was possible. March 31st wasn't. Um, I'm asking around. I'm going to see if I, how many people I get at the meetings on that. Lynn, April 7th, March 31st, either or? Fine. Peter? Either. April 7th be better. April 7th be better? Either. Mike. We kind of wanted to go to a police commission meeting. So. There's no more police commission. You don't have the pit. There's no more police commission. You don't have the pit yet. <laughs> oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> uh, let me see. Is that next week? Oh, I'm fine. I'm sorry. I think I can do that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do first Monday. Tentatively. Because she didn't want to act like weeks. 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 Guys are wonderful. But that would have missed your meeting. <laughs> well, oh, oh I'm, I'm sure you'll finish well before us no, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> um, April 7th, Tim? It seems like we're good with the 31st. As long Except as for Eileen. Well, well, I know I have to drive to the airport. I don't know what time, but I can find out. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I got to get the majority of people. Who do I get the biggest head count um, mm -hmm. uh, on that? And that's all I'm looking for. So, okay, um, I will let you know. I'll so, if, I'll put it this way: if you can do March 31st, mm -hmm. we'll it'd be good if everyone could go though. If everyone can go on the seventh, that seems to make more sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you want to do it on the seventh? Yeah. It get, also gives us more time to read okay. through the whole thing. Yeah. You could do both things. 
No. <laughs> Love all my board members, but there's a limit. <laughs> I'll start now. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to have a special meeting um, on April 7th of the planning board, mainly to discuss the finding statement associated with SUNY Park Point project. I can. Can I discuss something? Broadly regarding the finding statement. Should we finish? Yeah, I was going to have George go a high level, but if you think it's, you want to bring that in, because I just feel like we've we've had this piece of section K for a while now, and nothing has changed with it um, regarding the, this particular piece. I'm talking about the text that begins at 297 and ends at 2989. Um, I would love to get a sense from the board about the idea of omitting, omitting that and going with um, the text that starts 2993 where it says the land use approvals for the project. Um, you know, this way we could, we could really review this finding statement um, without having this alternative in there. What is the alternative? Time out, let me just... I'm talking about this section and this section. I do not think we need this oh. section. Okay. Yeah, the video is still on. Yes, it's section. still on. What's it's line? still a meeting. What's that? What line number? Two, it's st two nine seven five through two nine eight nine. Wait a minute. Let me get to it. Nine seven five two. <laughs> Give me the. Because you've been making edits. No, I haven't. What's the next line? Should be able to get line number. Oh no. Two nine eight nine. Say it again, Tim. Seven nine. Well. Two nine. That one's different too. It's the document that George just sent us. I'm yep. referring to page fifty nine. Starts two nine seven five. Right. Got that. No, that's different. Okay. Let's see. Uh, start of the sentence. Text. I'm just fine. Alternative A. Um. I'm talking about. Uh, what are you talking? <laughs> I mean, it's the document that you sent today. Yeah. Or yesterday. Yeah. Last yeah. Night. yeah. The yeah. land. No, it's 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 I just opened it. The annual schedule of final things on my. No. Oh, you know what? I've been putting comments in. Maybe that changes my page. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's yeah. what's the I text start? Because I think there may be some skew here. Okay. This one is a, it must be structured in a manner that ensures the cost of community services incurred by the community members. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. the section. On my about. page, it's page 59 and it starts at 3188. I don't know. What, what does it say though? Oh, it says alternative A, adjust the pilot. It must be structured in a manner that ensures the cost okay. of. Is that enough for you? That's got it. Okay. Okay. So I'm suggesting we omit that so we can actually read this thing in its entirety. I would love to see how the rest of the board feels with that. I mean, we've had the, that section of text for a while. None of this is new. Um. The reason I wanted alternate A in here uh, is since we're not the taxing jurisdictions um, that can make a decision on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, I wanted to ensure that, uh, that they had a say in that decision. In other I think words, that's the thing yeah. is though, the, 
that it's our finding statement. There's no taxing jurisdictions that uh, chime in for our finding statement. So, you know, I think the idea is that we included it so the planning board could review it and see how it reflects it with the rest of the, the content that we've been reviewing. So it was kind of like for us to consider one versus the other. Correct. So that's why I would love to see how the planning board feels. Well, that's why I was just, yeah, I was just giving my opinion. I wasn't oh, okay. giving it. I wasn't, no, I wasn't. Uh, you, you were trying to see how the planning board, and I jumped in and said, this is how this planning board member felt. Reason I wanted A in there is that because, or reason um, for, for, this, for alternate A is that since we're not the taxing jurisdiction, I don't want to take anything out of their ability to negotiate a, a settlement that's suitable to them uh, that they agree to uh, for this project. I, if they found some solution, since I don't know what the solution is yet, since we don't have a pilot, or do we have an adjusted pilot, or a uh, deviated pilot, or, or no pilot, um, we're you know, trying to set this thing up on it. Um, so from my perspective on it, uh, this allows the town to um, say yay or nay in, in a negotiation stance on whether they think that whatever payments they receive are suitable. If they say no, then that says there's no project. So you're saying this leaves open a door that you're not happy with? Yeah, correct? absolutely. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not comfortable with that mm -hmm. section in this finding statement. I think we've provided an enormous amount of research and, uh, and fact to back up uh, the other section, which begins with the land use approvals for the project. And, and I would like to, I would agree. you know, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, I, I would like to see how our planning something. board feels about using using that section. Mm -hmm. and moving forward with a review of the finding statement based on that. Section B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tend to agree with you. I, I think Section A leaves too much open. Yeah, I'm, I'm not comfortable at all with Section A. Mm -hmm. Well, what is uncomfortable about it? I mean, let me just preface that by saying, I think at this point, there is no harm in retaining the alternatives. You're in the process of review. And one of the relevant points may be decided tomorrow, which is, uh, well, a relevant point may be decided tomorrow, which is, what is the unit count? I don't think that's relevant at all. I think there is harm in, in leaving it if some board members are not comfortable with it. I mean, then that's not a document that reflects our views. Well, I don't you're think not, that's you're not think adopting, I'm not saying you leave it in there it, this is an alternative for you to consider. Yeah. You're going to adopt the finding statement at the end of your review. But I think to eliminate it before you conduct your review may be subject to construction by other parties that there was not a good faith effort to explore and determine. We've, we've had this oh, in here for yes, several it's been in weeks. We've been reviewing this for in such well, an incredibly long time. What if we added a line at the end that said, this is an alternative, but the board doesn't feel it's a feasible one or something like that. that so we leave it in, but we say that this mm -hmm. is, it doesn't reflect our opinion, sort of. We're at the stage now where we don't know what, what the unreimbursed costs uh, are since we don't know anything on the payments now. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could, you could just look at all the number of points uh, below B, and, and I can't see mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. you would argue in any of those things. And it's so mm -hmm. much more than just unreimbursed mm -hmm. costs to the town. This mm -hmm. is so much more significant than just that. Well, mm -hmm. let me just say, you. What I've laid is a logical argument. You have to go through and determine if that logical argument applies to the facts and circumstances based on the record that's before you. That includes the EIS, includes the uh, 
record of the hearings on the FEIS and it includes the uh, hearing on the that the IDA conducted. And you have evidence in all of those things concerning impacts. And you have to weigh and balance and I'm going to distribute information to you about the process of well, I think that's exactly, exactly the point that I'm trying to make is that we've, mm -hmm. we've so thoroughly reviewed a variety of different impacts and we've identified those mm -hmm. impacts. So I, I think that having this in our community section, it, it, it actually clouds the issue of allowing us to kind of uh, dot I's and cross T's and complete this finding statement. We well, need okay. to have a finding statement mm -hmm. that, that is succinct and concise. And I think keeping this section in mm. here, it is not. Mm. And I, I would like to see how the, the board feels. I mean, I can make mm. a, a motion um, Take it off. To, to remove it, and mm. this way we can move forward mm. with our review without this mm. additional information. That, well, mm. that I, I think has already been, mm. been well vetted it may have been, and you may ultimately decide there is not much or nothing to discuss about this. I, I mean, but if, if for some reason we decide to put it back in, mm -hmm. we, we could certainly choose to do that. But I would really like mm -hmm. to read a document that is much closer to a final draft mm -hmm. as opposed to one that has, you know, loose ends. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's kind of a stretch on loose, you know, a document that has loose ends. I have. Um, and again, if you're going to say that any agreement, anything that says pilot agreement uh, is cause for the board to turn down the project, I think you're telling mm -hmm. the town. Then that's, yeah. that's it, exactly what mm -hmm. I'm telling you. That's exactly, and I, that's exactly and I, the way I, and I, I feel yeah, I've but, interpreted, you know, all of this analysis that we've been doing for months and months and months. I think you're just tying up the town's hands. Right? It's going to, won't, won't give it any room. It's either black or white. And I think that's just, I mean. I think it's, I, I think it's our responsibility as the lead agency, mm -hmm. you know, considering that no one has looked at this data more mm -hmm. carefully than this board. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I've, I've heard the comments from from the IDA uh, in particular, which I'm incredibly troubled by. Which is, I have no quarrel with this as a conclusion to the process of review. What I'm concerned about is, is procedurally, there is a document which was provided, uh, and the applicant was. I believe advised that this would not be on for discussion tonight. I, again, it's not the conclusion at the end of the day. What, the, the, the applicant but, can review this video. What, what yeah. does it matter whether mm -hmm. they're, they're here or not? This, is, I, this document has existed for how many weeks already? We have reviewed this thing. No, so many yeah, times. we have, but then something. no one else has. But this is our time to decide. This is our, our document. document. And then it, it will you know, be your discuss document. Discuss it amongst it ourselves. It will say what you determine it should say. But I don't know what the, you, the applicant being here, if they mm -hmm. said, yes, I think you should put that section in, what bearing would that have on our research we've yeah, been that, doing that for years? Me, that actually makes me very <laughs> that, uncomfortable. That the idea me. that whether the, the applicant is present I don't, I don't, we discuss. I don't concern whether the applicant's here or not. I think uh, sometimes the planning board should take direction from its elected officials. Well, we could ask our elected officials then. And I know they haven't yeah, read so, through, but. It sounds like it's annoying to see this. But can you kind of understand that this probably isn't going to be there enough? Well, probably well, then gonna, I, I mean, I feel very comfortable. I, there's no then way in the world probably that I could, that I could why not? conclude. <laughs> because that, it keeps that door open. Yeah, that, I, I'm not you know, comfortable reading this finding why? statement that section. <laughs> it's funny that we're just saying, why haven't? You're well, saying, why not? Tim, why haven't? Why I, I want to <laughs> ask you, though, do you believe that it's actually impossible for them to restructure a pilot application? That's the question. That's the question that right there. would 
adequately um, recompense the town. Suppose they were to say, okay, we'll yeah. pay. Two million dollars a year. You know, we'll, we'll pay, um, well, much more than what they're proposing to pay. You know, say 80% of what they'd have to pay or 75% of what they would have to pay. Um, based on what we're finding on expenses, that would, that would be adequate. Mm -hmm. Why? Why just give a 25% discount for no reason whatsoever? Well, I mean, maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know, I just don't get that. Hey, um, They're a uh, for-profit well, corporation. Lynn, this is, this why? is, this why? is, this why? is the language why? that I would include that I, that, I, that I emailed the board me... that I asked us to digest mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. It would say the land use approvals for the project must be denied as the significant adverse fiscal impacts of mm -hmm. unreimbursed cost via Wilmerite's proposed pilot instead of full taxation using conventional methods of tax assessment will result in adverse impacts on community mm -hmm. services and the resulting impairment of community services will affect the character of the town and village communities in significant adverse ways. And then you continue with all the other stuff that is oh, right. below you it. Know, it's okay. statement. That, so it's, it, that the explains key, it, because I had mentally via, plugged mm -hmm. that in. It, the key words is via Wilmerite's proposed pilot instead of full taxation using conventional methods of tax assessment. Mm -hmm. okay. And then in addition to I that, that is mm -hmm. the, the, the mechanical so hurdles them. of how, how pilots negatively impact school districts Right. tax levy limits. Mm. You cannot get around that. Mm -hmm. And I have asked the, the IDA whether they would be looking at that, and they mm -hmm. said they will not. Mm -hmm. It just seems like we spent, what, three years looking at this. Yeah. Every single thing that we've looked at has said there will be so many impacts to the town. It will not provide jobs. It will do this. It will do that. And then at the end, we're going to say, well, so let's do a pilot, and we won't get our full taxation, and it's mm -hmm. all right. We'll launch our thing to come on. Why? Just, just <laughs> back up. Why? Just back up. Okay. The resolution, <laughs> Tim, where you say, where you define the, the pilot, it's in the first sentence, I think, or the second sentence. Um, what I just read? Yeah. Yeah, where I said via Wilmer's proposed pilot instead of full tax chasing using conventional methods of tax assessment. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you're basically saying the pilot, as defined by, oh, I don't care who, by mm -hmm. the law, that pilot. That you're opposed to. In the pilot will be. Well, there's two things. There's the applicant's yeah. proposed pilot, plus yeah. even as as Lynn was suggesting. Well, let's say if the pilot was 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 something even richer than what the applicant is proposing, you still run into the problem that the the uh, the, the calculations for the the school district have negative impacts. Were you able to get the? Um Numbers for that? Yeah. Yeah, I have the numbers. It's uh, eight hundred and seventy-one thousand um, dollars. But but it's not so much about the numbers. It's about the the optionality that the school district foregoes when you have a a a project that has the potential of adding students to our school district. Well, that that is the problem. We have to be able it's to... A resi see, this is the difference. I, it's a residential project. This is not a, a uh, destination resort uh, that has been um, suggested to us by uh, the folks at Rocking Horse Ranch. This is not a, a manufacturing firm. Like, awesome. Neither one of those projects, if they were granted a pilot, are likely to increase the number of students at our, in our school district. Whereas this project, because the vacancy rate could, could in increase and that could open the door to additional families moving into to residences because um, property values will, will go down. I mean, it's just basic economics, basic supply and demand. That would, that would create additional impacts on our school district that cannot be mitigated based on yeah. how pilots I, are calculated. I understand the argument. We've had that discussion. Mm -hmm. Right, so and I'm I mean, not you're asking arguing me, so it's your, like that's exactly the point, is we've had this discussion. I, we have had the nausea. discussion. What Literally, we need to do to resolve the findings is to include reference to the sections of the EIS or other documents that demonstrate that. If you take a look at the outline that I uh, provided, it's the DEC section on findings from the handbook. And one of the things that we have to do is 
provide references to evidence to support the conclusions we're reaching in this. Which, I mean, that's what we Which is fine, and I, and I think we are, we're, Which we're, I, building, we're building that, uh, we're, we're building that whatever euphemism we want to choose, and we're continuing to build it and, and adding more detail. Mm -hmm. But the, the point is, I think we've gotten to the point where we definitely do not need this alternative A. It, I, I don't see well, how there's any scenario where alternative A makes sense based on the information that we've already included in this finding statement. So as we dot I's and cross T's, it's only going to become even uh, less of a possibility. Well, it's not the so why don't we just have a vote on including it or taking it out? Yeah, make a proposition. Okay. I, I make a motion that we remove it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't oppose because I think you just changed the nature of any negotiation stance on this. You just told the town that <laughs> don't even don't even continue discussions with with Wilma Wright. You told the school board don't continue any discussions with Wilma Wright uh, on any uh, anything uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, relationship to payments, whether you call it a pilot, whether you call it. Whatever. I don't think that's what we said. Yes, you did. You said. I think that's that's fine. I actually I think that is exactly what we said, and that is exactly our intention. And based on all of the research that we have done, and all of the data that will be in this finding statement, that's a very sound argument. Well, one of the well, things that occurred to me, because I was sort of thinking about what was in the DEIS and the FEIS, is the fact that when we did our scoping document, which dictated what went into these following documents, they had not applied for a pilot. That was not on the table. We did not explore those possibilities in the detail we would have in a scoping document if we had realized that that was coming down the pike. Um, they couldn't have applied for a pilot back then because that category yeah. had not been adopted yeah. by mm -hmm. the UCIDA. And that leaves, I think, a critical mm -hmm. weakness, which yeah. we tried to address in, in our working harder on the mm -hmm. environmental impacts. But it, I feel that it really sort of crippled the mm -hmm. process to a considerable extent as we've been going along. Oh, I, I'm not arguing that at all. I, I agree. So, I'm, was the vote five one, or are we are we changing the vote? So, strategically, by putting in the um, wording that Tim has provided, um, laying it on the uh, presence, the presumed presence of a, a pilot, mm -hmm. uh, with whatever terms. Um, does that give Wilmerite an opportunity to come back? Well, like, is there another mm. mechanism that could allow them and to say, you know, look, it's not a pilot, sort of. You know, we we see the that this is not going forward the way we want it to. Mm. We will do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Does that? Do they still have that opportunity, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. or is it is it truly? I would think they would. Sure. Because putting in the the wordage that you know the real tripping point is the pilot, um, mm -hmm. in in that sentence um, makes a difference, and I'm just wondering what difference it makes. They could probably come up with a list mm -hmm. of ways to mitigate mm -hmm. all of the problems that a pilot creates. Mm -hmm. That that would be on them, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're basically tying this, and that that any it, that it, if it has the word pilot in it, it's no for the for it. But if there was any other structured tax abatement that didn't have the word pilot in it. Yeah, I'm very concerned about I'm very well, concerned about to any to challenge to municipal home rule. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm very concerned about. Yeah, and getting mm -hmm. rid of getting rid of pilot does away with that. 
it, so it's could we said, it wasn't a spoken document to not be a pilot, start. but to be, yeah. say, adjusted, uh, what you just said, <laughs> instead of adjusted pilot that, you know, still negotiating, still working on things, which I'm not even, whatever, mm -hmm. zipping about that. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to consider that motion as a direction to me to revise mm -hmm. this document for your further consideration. Mm -hmm. This is not an action that you're taking no, on it's your to, it's, it's, a, it's an action to revise the document mm -hmm. so that we can actually mm -hmm. read it with a, a head towards Let's pretend those 18 lines are up there. Okay. I, I take your point, uh, okay. mm -hmm. but I just want to be clear. You're not adopting the findings. You're no, we are not no, adopting no. the findings. Adopting no, because we don't have a we don't have a final finding statement I, until we have a final I finding just statement. This I, I, I just say this folks at home. Got it. Yeah. I, I just You're right. We're not I adopting any findings. You're statement. giving me direction right. to make a modification right. of the finding statement for your further review. Okay. okay. And maybe we can include that that text. Um, um, you know, that starts with the land use approvals for the project, et cetera, et cetera, via Wilton Wright's proposed pilot instead of full taxation using conventional methods of tax assessment. You know, I think I've already sent that to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. And then we'll just continue to uh, include the information in the, in the subsequent numbers, um, you know, where, where we, you know, after the part where it says, in so finding the planning board has considered that, you know, one through infinity right well the other part of this is you will need to review this document and the, the uh, FEIS and the hearing statement mm -hmm. to make sure that there is evidence to support each of these determinations mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think there that, is. I don't think that will be uh, room managed I will we'll, I mean, presumably we will it will, it will be there mm -hmm. But we need to make sure it's there so that we have that's great a chain of factual assertions. No, I, I think yeah. I think you're doing a fantastic job of, of making sure that we're dotting I's and crossing T's. Absolutely. I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, um, George, uh, you have the 99 percent of the document. Um, um, read it over. Um, if there are comments. Send them to George. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till the board meeting for it. Um, and again, this involves crossing T's and dotting I's and singular and plural and misspell words. Um, so I would like to meet on April 7th with the, the intent to go through this document um, and, and uh, finalize it at that meeting. Mm -hmm. so so that would be the goal. That would be the only thing we'll have on the agenda. Are we going to have a meeting April 14th, too? Yes. Mm. Well, I mean, it is possible. I can't be here April 14th. Well, Passable. what we'll do is ask. You can't be, you can't be. Right. Mm. I'd like to not be. I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, no, I just, no, no, I'm just, <laughs> again, it's a legitimate question. And, and I'll, well, I'll do the roll call now. April, uh, April 14th. Um, do we have a, no, I'll be here. you okay. will? I mean, I just want to say that I think it sucks that we always have meetings on Jewish holidays. I am a very non-observant Jew, but I think it's not great practice. No. <laughs> I just want to say that. Like, I'm not going to a No, seat, you know, you know. I could have. all the time. I could have went to my grandson's <laughs> birthday party today. I think especially if we're having a special meeting on the 7th, it seems like yeah. it would make sense not to have a meeting on the 14th. And I, that's because right. Because of the Jewish holiday. In which case you'd be shifting the 14th to the 7th, which is yeah, fine, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, if, the, if the majority of the points are canceled, because I have <laughs> I have to be in Holyoke on Tuesday morning, so uh, the idea of not being here Monday is definitely uh, okay with me. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm asking the question. Um, I like it. Well, my mom will be very proud of us. Did something tonight. No, yeah, okay. I have I have a, a question for George. Actually, when you say review the DEIS and the FEIS to find evidence to substantiate the assertions, 
Um, the FEIS um, is, incorporates, does the FEIS incorporate information that we've gathered in our public hearings? And the, the FEIS incorporates the DIS information. As you will recall, the um, IDA application was not made till after that hearing mm -hmm. closed. The Des Moines report was revised in response to issues raised. It was then reviewed by CGR. All that was post DIS. Mm -hmm. So it was not in the FEIS, but it was, uh, I'm sorry, it, the information was in the FEIS, but there was no opportunity to respond to that information. Mm -hmm. So that's being addressed in the finding statement itself. Okay. And there are still things that have never been addressed that people have brought up in the public hearings. Um, you know, we've been told that, that they are too speculative, that they can't be substantiated, that they can't be studied, this, that, and the other thing, which is, you know, the effect of occupancies, the effect of um, different uh, demographics backfilling empty departments as a result of the project and things like that. Um, can that sort of issue, which has admittedly not been researched uh, for one reason or another, be um, mentioned or inserted? That these are things that we don't know. Maybe we can't know, but they are uh, great concerns. There is, there is a line between something which is speculative where there is no information and there is something which is the logical extension of evidence that's available to you. Mm -hmm. And where that line falls on a particular matter is a determination you make. Uh, when someone says there will be vacancies, there are assumptions which have been used to generate information in the EIS, which we have largely accepted. Mm -hmm. that there right. is an One assumption regarding the source of these students. And right. in the, in the uh, finding statement, I've tried to outline those assumptions mm -hmm. because they are uh, assumptions, they're, they're the basis of representations that you're taking action upon. Mm -hmm. So if the applicant tells you that this is going to result in 90% of the students coming from outside the town and village, commuters who will now be moving closer to college, mm -hmm. that is not something I think you can disprove, but you have to recognize you're making determinations based on those assumptions. Right. If they don't um, come to be, or if there is evidence that they're not the actual case, you can revisit, reconsider the determinations you make, you made in reliance upon those assumptions. So if somebody says 90% of the students will come from out of town, and it turns out that 90% come from within town, that is something that has to be re-examined. Well, what? but how do you re-examine it when the thing has already been built mm -hmm. and the damage is done? Well, I don't think it's about where the students come from. It's just you're increasing supply. When you increase mm -hmm. supply and you have the same amount of demand, vacancy goes, mm -hmm. it increases. Except That's if they're coming is. from outside, the vacancies increase outside. The question of what happens in the village and in the town is a question of where these people are coming from. You know, there will be vacancies in Rosendale, there will be vacancies in Kingston. Mm -hmm. The applicant's representation is... And on our concern is that increased vacancy opens the door, and, and I think it's fantastic because we have such a good school district and so many people want to send their kids here, and you look at the numbers, and there are more kids going to our school district 
we, you know, we have, you know, net increases of plus 40 kids this year. What happens when you have additional, additional housing available? And housing that's less expensive because there's more supply. When there's more supply, how that 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 creates a, a, a headwind for prices. Housing I, becomes I, more I, affordable. Yes. Well, and we're not increasing the number of students at the college. Yeah. If we were increasing the number of students, or if the college was suggesting they were increasing the number of students at the college, this would be a very different argument. Mm -hmm. But they're not. They're saying it's the same total enrollment. Right. They so, have said what so those students. So cheaper housing. I understand. Mm -hmm. You understand. I know. We've been, so. we're, we're recycling the argument. It's, there's mm -hmm. been an argument or a discussion as to what's going to happen. The information that the college, well, not the college, but the applicant is represented, is that these are going to be students coming from areas where they're commuting distances mm -hmm. and they're moving but, closer. But George, and, and that's, a, that's an assumption, that's not an information. That's exactly yeah. the point, point. and that's point why it's on the it's yeah. it's an assumption, it's, uh, there's no study. But, what, no, there never future. will be. No, this, uh, they, it's they a, didn't send out any questionnaires. And it's, a and it's, it's the same represent, it's the, the same types of representations that have been made by this applicant mm -hmm. using lots of numbers mm -hmm. that could never be backed up mm -hmm. with with any sort of rationale. Which I think our finding statement states. Mm -hmm. That's I mean the purpose is to say we can't. There's no way of saying the number of students that will move from New Paltz and the number of students mm -hmm. that will move from Rosendale. You can't you know, say, say things that. like 65% of your gross rent roll is going to go towards maintenance or money spent on maintenance in your property. That doesn't pass a smell test. It does not make right. sense. That's not determining the maintenance. But I mean, we could, I could, I mean, I could go on and on about so many assumptions and assertions that this applicant has made that don't. That don't that's make sense. sense. Well, well, and again, the the assumptions are being that's, made. That's so we have to, we have to, you know, you, you know, use things like common sense, economics, mm -hmm. just like basic Experience. stuff mm -hmm. that we were taught in school, not what a paid consultant is telling us to believe. I think one of the things that points to we're not sure where they're coming from and what we're doing. Uh, is the phasing of the project where they're building three quarters of it yeah and then five ten years who knows three years down the road um, but then uh, there was some thing floating around that said it was all one phase the infrastructure <laughs> is one phase you okay. got to put the pipe in the ground. Okay, so you don't have to put was? the building up, but you got to put the pipe in the ground. Okay, that whole thing that said it's it's only one phase was just. Confirmed. But my, yeah. under, my okay, understanding that, is that the vast majority of the housing will be built in the first yeah. stage. Five hundred and seventy-five percent. Sixty something will be built in phase one, which leaves one hundred and seventy. So, for example, the ten percent thing is seventy students. If that is what is. They say 90% from outside, 10% mm -hmm. from the town of Village. I mean, again, that's pure I, speculation. I, that's, well, if it's wrong. I don't think we need to continue to discuss that because it, no, it just does not make any sense. Mm -hmm. The assumption is that there's 3,600 3, in, in the dorms, there are 1,500 in the village and surrounding uh, area. Uh, and that there is a, another thousand students within commuting distance. Um, so the assumption was that out of those thousand students in the commuting district, they'll get X percentage. Of it. Um, and that, that's where we went back to the 90%. Uh, but we've carried that for two years now without anybody making any viable changes to that uh, I, 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 I feel like I've brought up holes in that idea so many times. Anyone living in Rosendale lives there because it's less expensive. Mm -hmm. Well then, why don't we, do you know the part in the finding statement that states that? Can we, you know, well, cross it I out? think I mean, you're going to have to look at the record. 
not the finding. The finding statement is, is a summary. Yeah. Well, you need yeah. to demonstrate but the it, basis for a conclusion. Yeah. No one's living in. No one's living in the the, the, the out, outside of this community because the housing stock is of a higher standard, and they're just waiting for higher mm -hmm. quality Wilmerite style well, yeah. housing stock. There might be one. Person. Okay, there might be one person. Like I just reminded. I don't know. We don't know but, what uh, we don't know. Okay. And on that. On that note. What I did suggest is that maybe you and Tim and I can look at the Section K a little bit more detail and make some revisions that will be consistent with your conclusions after that review mm -hmm. in preparation for the meeting on the 7th. If sure, we'll pick up time after the mm -hmm. meeting when we can get together. Would it be useful to send you annotated versions um, before the meeting? <laughs> How annotated? Well, with comments and corrections of small typos yeah. and things like that. Uh, you could certainly send the small typos and comments. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. So I think if you if you have, Lynn, if there are significant comments, you want to save them and for the meeting. For the meeting, okay. And what don't, I don't don't send a, a, a comment to George for his interpretation of what you want. If you really want the board to discuss it, okay. And the other thing is, if you're going to send typos and things, just send me the pages that need to be changed. I've discovered trying to look through the whole thing, trying to find what's different is. Sounds like a Not fun the game. The best use of my time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But <laughs> like those little comments. But what, what are the pages? Um, is this just, just using line numbers. It's just continuous line numbers. Yeah. Okay. The you line numbers don't coincide. Send me but the my line numbers shifted. The document. Send me the paragraph text. Putting in here. Send me the paragraph text. I'll find it. Okay. <laughs> it's easier than looking through the whole thing. Yeah. All right. So or maybe I could just give you a summary. And that would be fine. Mm -hmm. So in summary of the meeting, we're, we're going to meet on April 7th. We are not going to meet on April 14th. Or March 31st. Okay. Or March 31st. Okay. okay. Motion to adjourn. Oh, oh, oh shucks. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>